Hello. In this video, we're going to start looking at what you can do with two transistors. With two transistors, you have a choice of arrangements. You could put them side by side so that if current flows, there is a choice of paths. Or you could put them one above the other in series so that if any current flows, it has to flow through both. And that's what we're going to look at first. Here's a circuit to do that. So here are two transistors connected the 5 volt supply through our 1000 ohm resistor to the collector of the top transistor and I'm connecting the emitter of that top transistor to the collector of the lower transistor and then the emitter of that transistor down to zero volts. We have a control for each transistor connecting to the base of the transistor through a 1000 ohm resistor. If you recall from when we looked at the single transistor, it's when we had 1000 ohm resistors in this arrangement, which brought on a switch-like behaviour, and that's going to apply here as well. We can look at the voltages that we're applying at the control inputs. We can see the currents that are flowing into the base of each transistor. We can see the current that's flowing down through this resistor into the collector of this transistor currents which flows into the ter these two terminals must be coming out of the emitter of that transistor. If it's coming out of the emitter of the transistor, it must be going into the collector of this transistor. And any current coming to either of these two terminals must be coming out of the emitter of the transistor. You can also see the voltage at the output and also any volts that are being dropped across this resistor here. So let's see what happens as we change the controls. Start with this one. If I increase it to a little bit, so below the half a volt threshold to turn on the transistor, as before, no current flows. If I increase it to above the, the threshold to turn on this transistor, current starts to flow into the base of the transistor. But this time, no current flows down here. And that's because this transistor is not conducting because it's got uh, an input current into its base of zero because its control voltage is zero. So no current can flow down here and it doesn't matter how much we increase um, this voltage, it causes this current to increase but no current will flow down there. We can take this all the way up to our maximum five volts and we Get four milliamps going into here, into the base now, but still no current is flowing down here. So let's take this back down to zero and see what happens when we try the other control. If we put on a small number below the threshold to turn on this transistor, as we'd expect, no current flows. If we increase it above the threshold to turn on the transistor, you see there's still no current is flowing. And that's because this transistor is not conducting because its control input is zero. If this, conduct, if this transistor is not conducting, it won't allow any current into the collector, which means that if any current were to come out of the emitter, it would have nowhere to go to, so no current is allowed out of the emitter. And if current can't come out of the emitter of this transistor, then it's not allowed into the base of the transistor, and so no current flows here. And we can increase this voltage as much as we like, all the way up to our maximum of five, and no current will flow into this space here, so no current will flow down here, and the output stays at five volts. So current can only flow down here through this resistor if both of these transistors are conducting. So let's see that happen. We'll turn on this lower transistor first of all. So give it some volts at the input. Got a respectable current going into the base of the transistor. It's now conducting and is willing to accept current into the collector. We'll now turn on this other transistor by applying some volts to its input, to its base input. So I start to see some current flowing into the base. It's allowed to flow into the base now because this transistor will allow the current into the collector. 
Because current is now going into the base of this transistor, it's going to allow current to flow into its collector here. So you now have current flowing through this resistor. So we have volts uh, dropped across the resistor and our output has dropped to zero. So current can only flow down here if both of these transistors are conducting. So that means that both of the inputs must be high. And we can capture that behavior in a little table as we've done before. Like this. So if we have a low and low input, we have a high output, just this line here. If you're low, high, you still have a high output. If we have a high input here and a low there, we still have high here. Is that right there? And if you have high and high, we get low there. Now with the little table we saw for the single transistor, there was an intuitive interpretation of that as an inverter. We got up the opposite of what we put in. It's not at all clear how one should interpret this table. In fact, we can't interpret it properly until we start moving from the world of electronics to the world of logic. So the next thing we need to do is to look a little bit at logic and what logic functions are around.